everybody. Uh, Ms. Fennell here. I'm trying to figure this out. All right. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to take a few minutes today to share with you some of the stuff that we would share with you if we were in class right now. And so um, today you have still today to get done uh, yesterday's assignment, which most of you already have done. So that's awesome. Uh, we're finding that you guys are working very fast, which we appreciate. Um, and we're going to continue with mitosis uh, some more tomorrow. Um, but for today, your assignment, and I know it's going to be a little rainy, I think, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, but sometime in the next few days, if you could uh, try to get outside. And, of course, keep your six feet distance safely away from other people. Um, but we want you to get outside and make some nature observations. So with that, I wanted to just very quickly show you um, some of the things that we have for you uh, to do. So first of all, I would like to share with you is a little bit of information about frog. Dogs. So if we get to go back to school in May, um, we are going to be uh, dissecting frogs if we can do that. If we don't get to do that this May, maybe we could figure out a way to do it next year um, or something too. We just we just don't know. So we're going with it. But um, so these are frogs uh, right now this time of year. In fact, last week, I remember last Wednesday or Thursday or something, uh, was the first day I started to hear uh, frogs calling. And I've lived up in the Oak Grove area for about 18 years. And this frog right here, the Western Chorus Frog, is always the first frog that I hear every year. Um, some people say that this one's call. I'll play it for you here in a second. Um, sounds like running your fingers across a comb. So chorus frogs for 18 years have always been the first frogs I hear in the spring. Um, I just noticed we have a pond in our neighbor's yard and the ice is finally off the pond. So if you kind of look around, uh, we see signs of spring everywhere in nature, which is kind of fun right now. Um, so the thing that's happened with the frogs is over the winter, they actually hibernate. They burrow themselves in the mud and they hibernate. And then in the spring, they kind of thaw out and start hopping around again um, out in the pond. And the calls that you hear, um, a lot of kids will tell me in the past that they've heard these calls for years. They kind of knew they were frogs but they maybe didn't or they maybe didn't realize it was frogs or they didn't realize there were so many different kinds and so I will share with you throughout the spring we have various frogs uh, throughout the spring that we will be able to hear at different times these four are the first ones that we can usually hear um, what is happening is the males are calling for a mate and so the calling that you hear is the males calling so the females can find where the males are and then the females will lay their eggs and then the males will fertilize them so um, it's kind of what happens in frog reproduction uh, but the chorus frog is the first one the wood frog is the other one I'm hearing right now and then usually we'll hear spring peepers and leopard frogs uh, sometime soon so let me play first of all um, just what the sounds are like this is the chorus frog the western chorus frog turn my volume here, is the one that I'm hearing most right now. So that runs again. You go outside and you hear the sound of like uh, running your fingers across a comb. That's a chorus frog. A wood frog is the second one I've been hearing. And funny story about this, in the very first year I taught up here in St. Francis back in 2001, um, I had taken kids out to the pond for the day and um, all day long, I thought I was hearing ducks out in the pond. And I'm like, where are I'm looking all over? Where are these ducks? I grew up in southwestern Minnesota. We didn't have these out there. Um, these weren't ducks. It sounds like ducks to me with something stuck in their throat. These are actually wood frogs. And um, I heard a ton of these outside the other night, which I think is kind of cool. Um, also, um, I'm going to have a page of links for you here. And the first link that I'm going to have is a link to a YouTube playlist with all kinds of different, um, these are all frogs that are found in Minnesota. Um, so if you hear frog, frog sounds outside, um, I will get bonus points to my kids if you uh, email me recordings of frogs that you hear in your neighborhood. I think that would be awesome. Uh, so listen for frogs is job number one, nature job number one. Uh, second bird that I'm hearing a lot right now I want to tell you a little about are chickadees. And chickadees have been here for, mo for the most part for the whole winter. Um, I have another links page here that has a link to this video. Uh, it is a 10 minute video, so I'm not going to show you the whole thing right now. Uh, but it just goes into a little bit, this really, really common bird, if you're looking out the window at all. If you have any bird seed at all, you sit it out for them. Um, they will definitely come and, and, and eat some. And females make this call, which can be heard all throughout the year, but <laughs> much more so in fall and winter. It may seem like a simple call to our ears, but it's actually quite a complex and variable one serving multiple functions. Okay, so this is actually a really interesting video. Um, chickadees have several different calls. They have the chickadee call. And what she's telling you here is that the more Ds they put on the end of it, the more danger um, is in the area. And then the other common call they have, I can find it here, is called the Phoebe call, Only if you've one heard this one. In total. The first note, Phoebe, is higher in pitch than the second note, B. 
Also, the second note has a very short amplitude break in the middle, which is audible at close. So if you're, that's a really common sound that we hear when we're outside as well. And I run into a lot of people who don't know what it is. So I just wanted to tell you that's a chickadee. Um, if you want to watch this whole video today, and then if you want to go outside and see if you can find some chickadees in some of your chickadee videos, I think that would be awesome too. Uh, two more things to show you real quick. Another thing is a, another cool website that I really like, it's called Journey North. And we have all of these living things right now, they're out doing migrations uh, that are migrating from different places. So the two that I am most interested in are the monarch butterflies and the red-winged blackbirds. Uh, red-winged blackbirds did make, um, they are back in Minnesota. So if we take a look, I actually went, uh, there's a map here that shows you um, where the red-winged blackbirds are. I actually went and put one of these dots as mine because um, about two days ago I saw and heard my first red-winged blackbird. By the way, forgot to get a tab open for that. Um, but here's what a red-winged blackbird sounds like. Very big sound of spring. My cats are going crazy right now. <laughs> Kind of funny to watch. So uh, this is a very common bird also that we see outside. Uh, this is a returning migrant. It's been uh, flying north. And so if you actually hit the play button here, um, it'll show you where they've been migrating from. And all these little dots represent people who have seen a red-winged blackbird and then they go on here and report it. Um, the other one we're keeping an eye on right now is the monarch migration. Uh, so the monarch migration is is uh, always happening. Monarchs, of course, spend their winter in Mexico. And so a couple months ago, they started in Mexico. These are all dots of places where people have now seen uh, monarchs migrating back north. Um, so the first generation will fly. They'll lay their eggs on milkweed. And then the adults die. And then the babies grow up. And then we'll continue the journey north. Um, so we'll be looking. We're still a few weeks away from any monarchs getting back to Minnesota. Um, but the day we see our first monarch, that's always something I have kids on the lookout for. For, and when we spot it, um, you can we can go on here and put in data. So I also put the link to Journey North um, in the links page today. Uh, last but not least, if you are interested in animal cams, there are so many cool ones out there. And I put the link in for the Explore web page. Unfortunately, if you are on a school issued device, uh, this really stinks. But if you're on a school issued device, I am working on seeing if they can do anything about this, but um, the, the videos are blocked. But if you have your own cell phone or your own anything else that's not school issued, um, there are just really cool ones. My favorite one is the Decora Eagles. These are a pair of eagles that have been nesting in the same place in Decora, Iowa. Um, and they have, I think, their second eaglet just hatched last week. Um, there's a couple hummingbird cams, which are really cool, all kinds of nests. Uh, there's a couple loom cams. Um, but all of these right now are live. This one's a really cool hummingbird one. Wish I could show it to you, but it's blocked because I'm on a school computer. Um, but when I look this up on my phone, it shows up. So again, I'm going to publish the links page. I just challenge you to see, oh, and there's ocean ones and there's bear ones. Uh, so if you're interested in wildlife, um, maybe we'll hop on here once a week and kind of give the, uh, the spring update on what's going on. And hopefully you can get outside and you can enjoy some fresh air and you can listen for red winged blackbirds and chickadees and chorus frogs and wood frogs. See if you can go out and find them. Send Mr. Douglas and I your videos. Thanks a lot. Bye.